I was thinking about the other day about how comedy's dead. Mm-mm. About how Mm-mm. you can't make it. What? Uh oh. I don't think so. Have oh, you heard I'm my sorry. play a bit? Yeah. I don't yeah. So. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Good comedy is dead. Um, <laughs> <laughs> now, comedy's not dead, but like, you know what I mean? Like, fucking, sorry. Press the digitation. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know what I mean? Like, you used to be able to say anything, yeah, anything, and now you can't say nothing. Can't I say nothing really without someone with saying, saying something, and somebody needs to say something and just not care. Somebody I still think people back. do that. Who I think people are like, I don't know if I should say that, or they they're pussy and they say it, and then on stage they're like, Oh, am I allowed to say that? Oh, don't, don't cancel me. So. I don't think so. Especially in comedy. comedy. That's like comedy's thing. I understand where it, that that perspective comes in. But like all the comedians that I fuck with are people that are in like in like famous comedians that people like like comedians, comedians adore are people that go hard on social commentary. Pryor, Carlin, that one dude that wore all black and yelled a lot. I forget his name. Social That's commentary funny. about like that is what comedy is, dude. Yeah, but like I feel like if somebody's doing social co- social commentary about stuff that's like present and stuff you're supposed to agree with, like if someone's like white people are so stupid because they they're so racist these days, you know, like fucking Bill Burr did a whole thing on that. I'm like, yeah, of course you're supposed to feel that way. Like, do something against the grain, you know. Kind of. I mean, I think Burr's and, like, like the SNL skit. Yeah, and all the uh, like all the comedy I see of like stuff that's like against the grain. I look at the date and it, date and it was like posted like in 2010 or something. And I'm just like, oh, okay. Yeah, I I just I don't know. I don't agree. I think com- comedians that do that are still doing that. I'm not even up on my stand up, Ella, but. There's a, there's a, you know, Burt Kreischer at all? Who? Burt Kreischer is a comedian. Yeah. He has a, a Netflix show that's funny. There's some clips. It's called The Cabin. You should check out some of the clips. It's a, it's a, it's a fun time. It's fun. Damn, somebody's cooking? <laughs> Fuck. I don't agree with that, dude. I don't, I don't think comedians are, are kind of... I do think that they're aware of, like, the kind of... Uh, climate of people being uh, like testy with stuff but anthony jeselnik mm-hmm. i feel like he's not afraid he's a guy that's not afraid he's like one of the few guys that's like not afraid but i feel like his comedy is his brand is always different than other people it's a little i feel like if it was like the 90s he'd be able to break into the mainstream but now he's becoming he's just he, he's kind of there he's like our core audience of people that really fuck with dark humor, but it won't get any yeah. bigger than that. Like he'll yeah. probably never be on like a show on fucking ABC or anything, you know? Yeah. I, I mean, that's kind of, I, I feel like that's kind of an antiquated thing of comedians trying to be on daytime TV and stuff now. Yeah. Comedy is still kind of like, or even like a, uh, I don't know, like a nighttime show to promote a new special or something. I think that's just fucking antiquated in comedy. Yeah, but uh, you gotta do what you gotta do to make your career. I think it's it's, it's toward. I mean, it's that new media stuff, dude. Like, I do think you get to a point. Say you're like you're a famous comedian, or you're getting there. I don't know who's like medium famous. They're all kind of the same to me, except for the really big guys like Kevin Hart. But like, you get to a point where you kind of gotta like take every opportunity to get your image out there. And like sometimes your agent will be like, I don't know if this is like a good fit for your image based on your last routine. And then it's it's at that point that you gotta realize, okay, do I change my act to make more money, or do I stay true to what got me here in the first place and stay not that famous? Yeah, I kind of get that. But the people that like like Kevin Kevin Hart would <clears throat> would be someone that would be what doing what you're doing, what you're saying. <laughs> yeah he did he definitely did that yeah that's 
that's the kind of comedians I don't really like fully enjoy. Yeah. Cause that, that is like mainstream comedy, you know? Yeah. See like now Kevin Hart level fame used to be like Chris Rock's not really dark. It's not very dark, but he's darker than Kevin Hart. And he was like the yeah. king back then. You yeah. Know? Yeah. I get that. I get what you're saying. Very like <laughs> family ABC late night talk show comedy. That's never been my, my type of comedy. Chris Rock. My comedy's the, the cats that are goddamn podcasting and talking about ball sacks and other stuff. <laughs> this is, I wonder when, uh, I don't know. I wonder where all this is going to lead. This this podcast comedian train. Uh, direct to consumer stuff is what it They're is. They're all uh, in competition with each other. Really? Kinda. They all have their own niche audiences. And they Networks all help each other. They all interview each other. Yeah, there's not. They're, I mean, there's no really like in that space in like in like podcasting, too. It's not really like it's not. There's really no like true competition. Like because if you if you all network on the same stuff and especially on like a touring comedy lane, like. You're gonna go into the cities and people will still see you. That network you, you just boosts your brand more. It's so weird that they used to I guess maybe they still do. All live in LA and when they want to do a podcast with someone, sit in LA traffic and drive to someone's house or their studio. And they could have just rang them up on Zoom. And Yeah. No one was thinking about that though. And then also it does especially with uh like like with this is kind of different because we have like a built rapport with each other. But if you're kind of just, you know, guest after guest after guest, um, having that human interaction does make a, a different vibe and and conversation for sure. Yeah. I think even, even now it'd, it'd be different a little bit than Zoom oh, versus man. human. God damn Direct to consumer, God. man. That's what it is. That's what Direct music consumer. Is going kind of towards, except you have streaming platforms. But yeah, with comedy, is that the new media stuff? You, you build up your audience and give them your website and have a link to your new special that isn't on Netflix. <laughs> and then when you come in to town a to tour, they, they they show up, give you that money. Was it on Vimeo? No, v- Vimeo, YouTube. Definitely Should Netflix you- is the, is the thing. I know Burr has the like uh all things comedy website is, which i think might host things is netflix direct to consumer i mean when i say that i mean like creator direct to consumer so from like a creator perspective no but like that's netflix i, I think netflix is your new especially for comedians that's your new like late night get your your voice out for comedy yeah not goddamn jimmy fallon at night with your 10 minute ass set but I'm, yeah I, I i get that it puts you in front of millions of people but fucking jimmy fallon dude antiquated comedy jimmy fallon still like all that shit still gets a shit ton of views on youtube and stuff though yeah yeah like just like the clips and whatnot for sure, puts so you in still, front of a lot still of an audience. 